Ruby on Rails makes it really easy to build a fully functional authentication system. I'm going to run through creating a authentication system using a gem called Devise. If you're unfamiliar with what a gem is, you can think of it as a plugin or a library for Ruby on Rails applications. If you're unfamiliar with creating authentication using Rails, I would highly recommend heading over to railscast.com and typing in authentication from scratch and going through the uh, first authentication from scratch video. Ryan Bates does a great job of explaining how to create a new application and then just building out an authentication system of your own. But for now, I'm going to use a gem called Devise. If you Google this, the first result, which will take you to the Devise GitHub page. And they've done a great job of fully documenting what this gem does. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the Getting Started section, and this is where we're going to get started. First off, I'm going to go into a new terminal window, and I'm going to create my new app. And I'll just call this a Devise app, and it's just going to generate all the files for my new application. And after I do that, I'm going to want to go into the directory and then open up the application in TextMate. And as you can see in the first step on the device website, it's saying that we need to include the gem device to our gem file. So after we've added that to our gem file, we'll want to hop back over in terminal and run the bundle install command. And that's going to tell the application to bundle the device gem in our application. We'll want to run the next command, which is going to install device in our application. And I'm going to have all these commands and the code that I'm going through right below the video. So you can go ahead and feel free to just copy and paste this into your application as well. So after I've installed the device gem. I'm also going to want to create a model. So you can call your users whatever you want. You can call them people, peeps. Um, I'm just going to call it uh, Rails Generate Device User. And that's going to create a database migration which has a user table and you know user fields and everything that the device gem needs to build the authentication system. So what I'm going to want to do is migrate those fields over to my database. I'm going to run a command called rake routes which is going to let me know the, the routes that I can go to in my application. So if I go to my local host I can go to users slash sign in and users slash sign out and all the rest of the routes displayed here. So if I run the Webrick server and I go to my local host, you'll see I just have the default getting started Rails, Rails page up. But if I go to users slash sign in, you'll see I have my sign in and I can go to my sign up. So I'm going to sign up for an account. And just like that, I've created a new account. You can't see anything that happened right now, but the authentication system is fully there. Uh, what I'm going to want to do is create two more controllers. I'm going to create a home controller and a dashboard controller, just so that way the user can arrive at the home page and they have a sign in and a sign up button. And then after they have been signed in, they can automatically just be re redirected to their dashboard. So I'm going to do that now. I'll just open up terminal again and I'll want to call Rails generate controller home and then I said I'm also going to want to create a dashboard controller so I'll say rails generate controller dashboard now as you can see inside of my controllers folder I have a dashboard controller and a home controller add the index action to both of these. And inside of my views folder, I'll also want to create 
the index.html for both of these, the dashboard and the home as well. And I'll add a heading tag just to let the user know where they're at. Welcome to our website. So this will be the home page. And inside of the dashboard, we'll want to say welcome to your dashboard. And the final thing that we'll want to do is the user is not going to have a sign in or a sign up button on the home page. So we're going to want to add that for them. But instead of adding it inside of the index file of the home page, we're just going to add it to the main application layout header. So I have a snippet of code here that I'm just going to insert. And I'll just run through really quickly what this code is doing. We just have a div user nav. It's saying if the user is signed in, then show that they are signed in as the current user email. Otherwise, if that's not you, then sign out. If they are not signed in, then we'll want to show a sign up and a sign in button. And then what I have here is just the default flash method so it can let us, it'll flash if there's an error, like you left the email field blank or it's an invalid email or whatever the flash message is that's generated. And if you need help with these, I'll make sure to have all of this below the video so, so that way you can just copy and paste it if you'd like as well. But if you go to the device website, you can see that they have common controller filters and helpers right here which you can see you have a user signed in function and you can get the current user object and the user session. So you can get everything that you need from the device gem. And the gem is very flexible so you can integrate it as tightly as you want into your application. So don't ever feel like that you'll be constrained if you're using uh, the device gem. After I add that, I want to make sure all of my files are saved and I'll want to rename the default index.html so that way it doesn't show our your writing rails default page when we go to the home page. Actually, one more thing that I will want to change inside of the route, I'm going to need to tell it where to go to where the home page is going to go to. So we will say that we want the root to point to the home controller and the index action. And as we start the server and we head over to our local host, you'll see that we now get a message, welcome to your website, and it has that I'm signed in and not you, sign out. Click on sign out and sign in. Now you'll notice it's not going to the dashboard whenever we log in. So we'll go ahead and change that right now. But what you can see is if we go to the dashboard, it's not letting us go there because we haven't added the resources inside of the route file. So as you can see, if I run rake routes, the only routes that I have right now are all the user routes. However, if I add inside of my routes file, resources dashboard, and I rerun this command, you'll see that we now have dashboard as a valid URL that we can go to. So one more thing, I'll want to add the, if the user is logged in, I will want to have them redirected to the dashboard controller. So I have a little snippet for that too. So what this is saying is if the user is signed in, then we want to redirect to the dashboard controller and the index action. And one final thing, I'll want to add a before filter. 
and say authenticate user. And as you can see, we have the before filter authenticate user is documented on the device website. So what this is going to do is it's going to say run this filter before any action and before we can get to the dashboard index it's going to run this if and it's going to say if the user is not signed in then redirect them to the sign in page otherwise if they are signed in then let this controller execute. So finally, we'll restart the Rails WebRx server and head over to localhost. As you can see, it automatically redirected me to the dashboard. So I'll sign out, and if I try and access the dashboard right now, since I'm signed out, it's going to send me to the sign in page. So if I sign in, just like that, I'm back at my dashboard. I sign out and it takes me back to the home page. So that's it. It's that simple to create a fully functional authentication system using the device gem and Ruby on Rails.